Hi there, I'm Josh Berman, and this is the OC Little Mon 5. It's a lightweight 5 inch monitor for people with cameras who want to expose their images real nice. I've been on the hunt for a lightweight monitor for my Canon C70 for a little while now. I'm a wedding filmmaker and I primarily shoot handheld, so I want something that's bright, color accurate, and lightweight so my back doesn't completely give out after a long wedding day. My current monitor is the Atmos Shinobi, and while it does the job, it's definitely got some drawbacks. I actually made a whole video comparing the Shinobi to two other monitors, and in order to find out if the new OC Little Mon 5 can replace my Shinobi, I'm gonna run it through the same tests I did in my previous video. Quick disclaimer, OC sent me this monitor for review, but they did not pay me and they have no control over what I say in this video. I do get to keep the monitor after the review though. While the Little Mon 5 is a small monitor, it's still a bit larger than I would have liked. It's pretty thick, which is kind of annoying, very comparable to the small HD Action 5. I would have loved for it to be about half the thickness, especially because it doesn't have a fan inside, so I'm not really sure what all the thickness is for. It is slightly thinner than the Shinobi though, so that's nice. This guy comes in at 212 grams, which is just slightly more than the Shinobi's 200 grams. I prefer monitors under 200 grams, but 12 grams over is not a big deal at all and holding it in my hands, it feels very light. Most of the monitors that I've personally used in my career have their HDMI port located on the side of the monitor. This one has the ports located on the back side though, which isn't really a good or a bad thing, but it did force me to buy a new HDMI cable because the right angle one that I usually use won't work with the port placement. This monitor does also include an HDMI out port, which is not something that I'll really use that much, but it's nice to have it there. And it allows you to do stuff like this for no reason. I really appreciate that OC included a DC port on the back here. Personally, I probably won't use it that much, but I love when I get more than one power option. And one last thing in this area, I'm not sure how I feel about the battery release button, which is a really specific thing to complain about, but it's, kind of annoying. On the Shinobi, it's located in the middle of the battery plate, but on the OC, it's located right at the very top, which makes it really hard to remove the battery one-handed. On the Shinobi, it was super easy because of where it was located. I could put my hand over the battery and push the button with my finger and just pull the whole thing off. But with the button located on the top of the monitor with the OC, you just can't really get your finger in the right place and the button is harder to press in, so it doesn't really work very well, which is a bit annoying, but not a big deal at all. In my previous video, I mentioned that the OC's other monitor, the T5 Plus, felt cheap and too plasticky, almost like a toy, and the screen quality was pretty poor. Luckily, the Little Mon 5 has made great strides in both of these areas. I wouldn't say that the plastic housing feels premium, but it's a step up from the T5 Plus. The Shinobi's housing is still a bit more robust and premium, I guess you could say. The screen is a huge upgrade though. They actually have a touch screen on this one versus the weird crappy panel that kind of discolored every time you would touch it on the T5 Plus. The one area I did notice a potential problem is the mounting threads. When I put a friction mount on there and tilt the monitor back and forth, there is a bit of flex to the plastic housing. It makes me just a little bit worried that I'm either gonna snap the plastic housing or the threaded insert itself. One thing about these lightweight fanless monitors is that they have a tendency to get hot after extended use. And the Little Mon 5 is no different. <laughs> after running it for 30 minutes or longer, the display will start to feel warm to the touch, but it's not uncomfortable or anything. However, the DC port on the back gets very hot, like hot enough to kind of burn your hand if you put it against it. I love when monitors include locating pinholes. It makes it much more stable when connecting to a friction mount and prevents unwanted twisting. The Little Mon 5 does have locating holes. However, they seem to be set up primarily for the tilt arm that comes with the monitor. When I attach my small rig friction mount, the locating pin doesn't actually match up with the hole on the monitor. So that's a bit of a bummer, but you know, I guess it's nice that they're there. I'm not really a fan of the power button on the Little Mon 5. They moved away from the power switch that was on the T5 Plus and instead opted for a power button. 
just like what's on the Shinobi. Unfortunately, it also comes with the super annoying four second hold to power off feature, which means you have to hold the power button for a stupidly long time to get it to turn off. It is slightly faster than the Shinobi at three and a half seconds versus the Shinobi's four seconds, but it's still very annoying and I really wish they would have stuck with the power switch. In combination with that, the monitor also takes quite a while to power on. Honestly, it gets a bit tedious. My camera will power on in a few seconds, but then I'll have to wait for the monitor to turn on for like 15 seconds. Not a big deal if you leave the monitor running the entire time that you're using it, but if you're constantly turning off the camera and turning off the monitor and then turning them back on, it's just annoying. The brightness on this thing is great. Even in direct sunlight, I can see the monitor, so no complaints there. I do feel like a thousand nits is kind of the baseline for acceptable brightness though, so this definitely isn't pushing any boundaries, but it's been totally fine for my use case. I do really like that all you have to do to change the brightness level is just swipe up and down on the screen. It makes it super, super easy to change your brightness on the fly. Color accuracy is something that's super important to me. I want to be able to trust that the image I'm seeing on the monitor is the same as the image on my camera's LCD. And I am very happy with the little Mon 5 here. It's a little bit warm, maybe 200 Kelvin off and just slightly more magenta than my camera's LCD, but it's totally usable. And it's way, way better than the Shinobi, which was super warm out of the box. A big issue I have with the Shinobi is that it adds a lot of contrast to the image when you apply a LUT. It makes it kind of hard to know if your shadows or highlights are clipping or if it's just the monitor lying to you. Luckily though, the weird contrast issues seem to be an Atomos special because the Little Mon 5 looks amazing. The contrast is nice and I feel like I can see all of the dynamic range I'm getting out of my C70. And by the way, I did actually find a bit of a workaround for the Shinobi. If you purchase the Phantom LUTs for your camera, they include a version of the LUT that's specifically made for Atomos monitors to combat the extra contrast that's added by them. Eric Walker made a really great video about the Phantom LUTs that you should definitely check out if you're interested in them. Another nice feature the Little Mon has is the ability to color calibrate with an X-Rite calibrator. Sadly though, on top of the cost of the X-Rite unit, you'll also need to buy a special calibration cable from OC to be able to do this. And just like with Atomos, they're going to charge you a bunch of money for that cable. It's like $70 or something. OC was very kind and they actually sent me a cable to be able to test out this feature. Unfortunately though, after calibrating the display, it looked exactly the same as it did before I calibrated it. The display was still slightly warmer than my C70 and a bit more magenta. I even calibrated it a second time and got the same results. Now I realized that my C70's LCD might not be color accurate itself, but when I calibrated the Shinobi's display, I was able to match it almost perfectly with my C70, so that's interesting. That being said, the Little Mon is already so close to the C70's LCD that it doesn't really matter. And unless you have the monitor right next to the camera's LCD, you're probably never even gonna notice a difference. When I was reviewing OC's T5 Plus monitor, the thing that ultimately made me decide to return it was this weird viewing angle issue. If you were looking at the screen from any angle other than straight on, the display would get really washed out. It was really, really annoying to use because you would either need to be constantly adjusting the screen to get the correct angle, or you'd just be looking at a washed out image the whole time. Thankfully, the Little Mon does not have this issue at all. I haven't had a single problem with viewing angles. It looks great from pretty much however you look at it. <laughs> the Little Mon comes with an impressive collection of assist tools. Here's a quick list of the main ones. Aspect guides, frame guides, anamorphic de-squeeze, false color, zebras, waveform, histogram, vector scope, peaking, D-log, LUT support, pinch to zoom, and image flip. I really think OC has done an amazing job with the assist tools here. They are so much more robust and customizable than what the Shinobi has to offer. The false color, for example, is completely customizable. You can set exactly where you want your black clipping point or your middle gray to land. They also allow you to set pretty much any aspect ratio you want with the aspect guides. The user LUT even lets you set the intensity of the LUT, something that I don't think I've seen in any other monitor. And you can tell the monitor how you want the assist tools to read your image. You can choose to have the tools be based on the log image that your camera is feeding the monitor, 
or you can set it to read the image after a LUT has been applied. Super, super nice that they put that in there and really allows you to choose how you want to preview your image and view your tools. I did run into a few things that didn't quite work properly though. The ones I noticed were the false color and the D-log. The false color has a setting that will automatically set everything based on the camera that you're using, but I can never get it to match my C70's internal false color, and I didn't really wanna deal with two different false color spectrums. Luckily though, you can just set it to custom and dial in your false color settings manually. The D-log function kind of worked, it gives you two different options for a log to Rec. 709 conversion, but neither of them were anywhere close to the Canon Rec. 709 LUT that's built into the Canon camera. I'm not really sure why this feature is so bad though. I feel like all they really needed to do was go to each camera manufacturer, download the free conversion LUTs that everyone supplies, and install them onto the monitor. Instead, it's like the monitor is trying to mathematically correct the log image, but it doesn't look very good. Also, the pinch to zoom isn't great. It's definitely nice that it's there, love that it's there, but it doesn't work very well. <laughs> it's slow and jittery, which ends up just making it annoying to use because it takes so long to zoom in or out of what you want to see. OC's operating system on this monitor is pretty great for the most part. <laughs> it's a page space system where you can set up multiple pages with different tool sets, and it's super easy to switch between the pages. You just swipe across the screen and it'll switch over to the next page. It does feel like a budget monitor though. The touch screen isn't super responsive and I sometimes have to tap on things multiple times to get it to actually register my tap. Adjusting things like sliders will often result in me accidentally clicking something that I didn't want to and the whole system just kind of feels sluggish. The way that they have some of their menus laid out can also be confusing at times. Every once in a while they have a setting hidden in a secondary tab that you need to swipe over to reach but because it's only a few of the settings it's really easy to forget that there might be a second tab and then you're just looking for this setting and can't find it because it's actually hidden in a whole other area. While the page system is nice, the way that you create new pages is quite frustrating. There's no option to duplicate a page, so if you want a copy of page one, for example, you have to start completely from scratch and rebuild the entire page. There's also no way to reorganize pages, so if you want to change the layout or the order that you have the pages set up in, you basically have to delete all of them and rebuild every single one. Once you get everything set up the way that you want it, it is quite nice though. Most of the issues that I experienced really only came into play as I was getting the monitor set up. Honestly, I love this monitor. It's just about perfect for my personal needs. It basically solves every complaint I had with the Shinobi, and not only that, but it is significantly cheaper. Really, my only serious cons are the sluggishness of the OS and the annoying power button. <laughs> and those are really just quality of life issues. There's not much to complain about here. If this had been out when I did my previous video, it would have won hands down. I realize there's a lot of other monitors out there in the same category that I have never tried out. So I'm obviously not educated enough to say if this is definitively the best monitor. But what I will say is that I 100% recommend this to anyone looking for a lightweight, budget-friendly monitor. It's feature rich and doesn't appear to have any game breaking downsides like a lot of other monitors in this price range do. There are definitely monitors out there that have brighter panels or camera control or additional pro level features. But if you're just looking for a small monitor to accurately preview your footage, this is a great option. All right, bye. This is my moment. Oh no. <laughs> Hi mom.